Welcome back to the Accountable Podcast. I am Ian Tenenbaum, the founder of Accountable. We are talking about all things ADHD in business. I'm joined by Josh Budd, as usual, Hello. founder of Neuro Notion. Howdy. <laughs> that was a really strong welcome today. So you did all we, the work for me. Yeah. Um, well, we'll trade off. We'll, 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 I'll put in some energy and then you take over, um, yeah. in typical ADHD fashion. So there's a few topics we want to talk about today. I know you wanted to talk about the, the Gabor Mate book, um, and some other stuff. So, so where, where do you want to start? Where should we jump in? Uh, let's start with what you wanted to talk about first, because I think it's the, 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 best way the best way into this conversation and then it will have a lot of things that we can reference back to so you wanted to talk about the four conditions or or maybe this sort of metric matrix idea that you've come up with about what conditions are required for us to commit to a task and actually do it yeah so i was talking with some clients this week in a group and we started playing with the idea that there's often these four kind of levers that are required or, or, or kind of factors in us doing stuff. So we were, we were talking about task initiation and how hard it is with ADHD to just get ourselves to do things. And this is a really big problem a lot of us struggle with. And, and it's hard to understand to non-ADHD people because it, it, it can actually be things that we want to do or things that are that we acknowledge are very important. So it's not like well, if you wanted to, or if you thought it was important, that's not enough. So we were trying to analyze, like, what is it that gets us to kick into action? And I was coming up with these, like, four factors, right? There's, there's, do I want to, or do I, do I not want to? Um, do I need to, or do I not need to? And need to, it always means right now. Do I need to right now? Am I good at it or am I not good at it? And do I like it and do I not like it? So these things are a little all nuanced, but just because you need to doesn't mean you want to. Just because you want to doesn't mean you like it. Doesn't mean you, if you want to, you're good at it, right? So it was like how, you know, we kind of need at least two of these, right? So, so we were looking at some examples from the community. People were sharing their challenges this week. Like I, I have this thing I want to do, but I'm having trouble doing it. So we tried to pull it apart. Well, okay. You want to, but it sounds like you don't need to, and you don't like it and you're not good at it. So that's only one out of four. That's not enough to turn on the switch to get you to do it. Right. So then we looked at other examples and it was pretty consistent that if, if, only one of the four were checked, impossible. So then we, the next question is, so, so if I'm not good at it and I don't like it and I don't want to, but I need to, what do I do? How do I get myself to do it? So I think, I think this topic t needs a lot more exploration. I think I'd like to develop some, 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 strategies and some frameworks around this because i think a lot of us fall into this i mean what are you this is new for you you and I, you weren't on this group this week so yeah. what are you hearing and and where could we take this that would be helpful to give people like some type of a of a framework you know because when we yeah. fall into only one of the four it, it it's often something that's important or necessary so what do we do yeah well i think for, for me, the most important one from everybody I've spoken to, all ADHDers from, from different, in different situations that I've had conversations with, the, the main one that is a, a big limiting one that, that puts the rest out is that if we're good at it or if we're not. And it relates back to confidence and there. That's often the source of procrastination in these things. And, and that's the why they can't commit to the task is because they're not confident they'll be able to do it or at least they were not confident they'll be able to do it at a good level. And I think that feeds into the two, two of them, which is if we want to, and if we like it. If you're good at something, most of the time you want to do it, 
and you like doing it unless it's unless you're so good at it that it's so easy that it's it's just not challenging anymore right there's that typical sweet spot it has to be just the right amount of challenge for us with adhd so maybe that's where i would put things in how can you make this task the perfect amount of challenge that is still engaging your mind but it's not so hard that it's overwhelming and causing procrastination so where's the sweet spot of challenge interesting and i like how you brought in the the confidence part because that's a mm. big component in the work with my clients is so often we go down this spiral over years of struggle that it just deteriorates our confidence and it really yeah. makes us question all those successes we've had and our capabilities so the the the, yeah, you introduced two new components, which is really cool. The confidence, so and then the challenge. So we do like a challenge. Um, and, and when we're good at something or we're confident, we tend to like it. So I think there's a I think this is gonna be a fun thing. Like the way I developed the ADHD productivity operating system was mm -hmm. just looking at the steps to complete a task and trying to create, you know digest, you know, uh, you know, put, compile it into a framework that's easy to understand. So I think, I think, you know, I could do something similar with this, where it, it becomes almost like this, this map where when confronting a task or a struggle, we, we can look at, you know, where am I falling on this map? And, you know, if there's lack of confidence, that might be a signal to start smaller mm -hmm. and then make it a challenge to <clears throat> tackle that smaller piece, which will build the confidence, which will make us feel good at it, which will make us want to do it. So there's this really interesting matrix here that, that can be forming, but it's helpful to get out of this kind of vague <clears throat> abstract frustration we have where I try to do it. I can, I try to do it. I can, I try to, and that just feels like stuck energy. It's very uncomfortable when we start looking at, you know, a more analytical or tactical roadmap. It's like, Oh, okay. Well, where are you on this? Okay. Well then that means you need to go to this step. Okay. And then from there you go to, right. And yeah. I think we, could, I think I could build something really Super cool here and well. we could play with this, play with this in the community too. And in the groups. Super useful. <clears throat> It'll be, it's a massive source of frustration for people when they know they need to do it, but they just, they need to, but they can't. Or well, it, it's, it's right in front of them. They know they could do it, but they just really, really don't want to. So they don't. So it's like, well, it, well, it, have a it, it, really reliable. It, they need to, and it's important, but they may not want to, they may be good at it and they may like mm -hmm. it actually, but they may not want to. And that unravels a number. So I actually had this come up with a few clients. Why don't they want to? Maybe they disagree with the approach. Maybe they don't think it's necessary. Maybe they don't think it's actually smart. Maybe they don't think it's a good use of time. So again, when we're looking at this, so you, you could be good at it. You could like it. You could need to do it, right? That's getting into three is a problem but you don't want to because you don't agree with your boss or you would, you know, you used to have an assistant do it. Now you have to. So, you know, you're frustrated and upset that you lost your assistant. Right. So there's so much that unravels. And then when we pull it apart, we can usually get to the root of it. Um, but it's definitely, I think the biggest takeaway for people is that it's not so simple. So, when non ADHD people look at us and these like cert, like, Oh, you didn't do that. Or, Oh, you're struggling with that. It doesn't make sense to them because I know you're good at it. I know you can do it. You've done this a hundred times, but you keep avoiding it. I, I, I don't, I don't get it. What's up with you. What's wrong with you. And we're like struggling inside. Like I can't explain it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting question, maybe that adds it, this into the mix. Then, at what point would you encourage somebody not to commit to a to a task? Like, is there a situation where, if none of these four things are met, do you then say, 
okay, you don't need to commit to this task. It's it's clearly not enough of a priority right now for you to commit right. to it. And maybe that's right. an error where they immediately thought, initially thought, this is a priority, I must complete this. But you go through this and you realize if you're not good at it, you don't want to do it, you don't like it, and you don't need well, to. Well, well, that's two, two of these are priority um, uh, triggers, right? Want to. Right. So if I want to, why do you want to? Why is it important? Why is that a priority right now? What does it represent? What will it allow you to then, do, right? And then need there'll to, be some things that you want to, but if you don't no, but, need to, do it. Right. So if you want to and you don't need to, then we have to like, we have to have a, you know, uh, we have to have a framework on how do we choose, right? Yeah. So so I think a lot of us get stuck in um, this waste of energy on things we want to do, but we don't need to do. And we haven't committed to them because we don't really need to. We kind we think we want to, but when we unravel it, we don't want to enough because it's not important enough. And we kind of know that. And that's really under the surface, what's holding us back. So when we look at the two con con factors of want and need, underneath them is going to tell us if they are actually priorities, right? I need to, because if I don't, I'll get fired. That's a priority, yeah, right? Priority. If you want to keep that job, I want to, but it's not going to do much for me right now. Okay. So that's why you're not doing it. Cause it's, mm -hmm. it's not. So, so maybe there's a, there's another consideration here. Um, I wouldn't call it important. Yeah. I would call it um, impact. Okay. So, so there's like impact, there's the want, there's the good, there's the like, and then there's some other factors that fall in, like how do you make it a challenge, build your confidence. So yeah, it's interesting. This is going to be fun to play with. Um, Definitely. But um, I know it's a hundred percent, a you know, a huge factor in our success and if we can iron some of this stuff out it's like the keystone habits the the things that have exponential impact so this concept that we're talking about we're trying to simplify it but it's the kind of thing that permeates throughout everything we do all day every day and feels sometimes impossible to overcome. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is trying to figure out how do we not focus on the thing that you're trying to do, not focus on the, the, the goal, focus on the underlying system that is driving right. you right. and, and, and start making like structural operating system changes that will, you know, last well, that's and and, and really reverberate yeah it's really interesting that you say that because one of the things that i constantly preach about right i'm a self-proclaimed systems geek i am very very stern on on the ideology that and this is hugely inspired by atomic habits but is not raved about i think enough is that a goal is essentially pointless if you don't have a system behind it right this point that on that in those in that olympic 100 meter sprint every single person on that lineup wants to win the medal but only one person does they've all got the same goal so it's all about the system and the process underneath it and they're hugely important for everyone with adhd the systems are you need to have systems that take things out off your brain take the stress off your brain onto a system let it do the work for you work smart and hard and um, i also wanted to touch on like i said the third point the thing that i think is super is super important is confidence and having that getting it to a point where it's perfectly broken down so it's easy enough to start so i haven't told you about this yet actually maybe maybe uh it would be interesting to get you to test it so what i'm currently building as as the first step of my new platform is an ai bot that you can come onto, you can speak and say i really need to get this task done it's big and i need you to help me break it down and reduce it and what this will do is have a short conversation with you and then break things down so it will prioritize things and put the easiest win first, something that it knows you're 100% capable of doing, and it puts that first. So when you look at that task list, 
you don't see one big thing that you're unconfident about. You see one small thing that you know 100% you can do. And by the time you've done that, you're already in the process. So the next thing is just a, a three minute thing. And the next thing is just a five minute thing. And it doesn't get increasingly massive. It just keeps everything nice in that perfect sweet spot. So it's currently undergoing a lot of tweaking because it's hard to get that output. But then it produces that, it puts it in a list, and then it lets you add it to whatever task list you use. So it'll let you add it to Notion or Sansama or ClickUp or whatever. It just lets you export it. So you yeah, you, you got me thinking about, you got me thinking about, so there's these concepts of like eat the frog and like do the hardest thing first. And, and, and you know, uh, the book, you know, one uh, thing, start with one important thing. And I think there's this hybrid between the concepts, right? Because for us with ADHD, we need small steps and we need momentum. But what's interesting is to think about not necessarily doing that small steps and the things you're good at in meaningless tasks or things that are not very significant, but maybe identifying the bigger project that is important, but just identifying the tiny little small part of starting it. Mm-hmm. So, so you're not just like, you know, there's both schools of thought and, and both I think are effective, you know, do some little l- less significant things and get momentum and confidence. But even better, I think is if we can identify the big thing that that's going to move the needle and then just zoom in on what, so I started playing with the concept of just previewing. So let's say I need yeah, to do all this insurance filing and I'm, you know, all the paperwork and stuff. So instead of say, I said, okay, I'm going to carve out some time and I'm just, I'm just going to preview it. There's no pressure, you know, and I'm just going to review. I'm just going to review what I actually need to do. That's it. And more often than not, I do that. And I'm like, Oh, it's not as complicated as I thought. Oh, and th- there's this one part that I can start with. Okay. I'm going to start with that. And I'll come back to it tomorrow. Right. But, but then I've gotten a meaningful thing started. So, so yes, I just wanted to throw that in there as another way of seeing. So, so when, when you're saying like, pick the easiest thing to do and get momentum, right. Maybe we can also do that though, you know, towards the, the bigger thing as well. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Some, Some things to play around with and I'd be excited for you to, uh, yeah, look. when's it going to be ready to test? Uh, I've set very strict deadlines that from the 15th of November, there will be a set of beta testers that will use it. So maybe I'll send you the link and see what your thoughts are. Get some yeah, feedback. 100%. The, the ideology behind it is that whatever we do, however it manifests itself, we want to create something that's 10 times easier, literally. And, and through an experiment, you can prove it, that it's 10 times easier to start this thing and get it done or, or overcome procrastination or overcome right. this lack of confidence whatever it is is a 10 times improvement from what you're currently doing to to this system i think yeah you can't what did you want to talk about with t- tell me what you were thinking about from the gabor mate book scatter mind well i just started reading well I'm, I'm sort of halfway through the book right now i think there's a lot of really interesting conversational points specifically about like the source of adhd and how it how it actually comes around and what are your thoughts on that first? And then I'll, I'll contribute. Well, I feel like, yeah, I don't know his work uh, very closely. I, I have seen him speak about it sometimes in ways that are, I don't totally agree with some environmental type considerations. Um, And, you know, I, I think it's been proven and I trust the research that shows how ADHD is biological and genetic and high, you know, co- you know, correlation to um, a parents with ADHD. So I, I think our society now is set up in a way that brings a lot of these challenges to the forefront in ways they maybe didn't as much over the last few hundred years, because, you know, now to have kids for the last hundred years sitting in a classroom all day, it brought 
all of this to the surface where 200 years ago, they were all day, every day running around constantly. And it, it was not noticeable, right? Um, Cause there wasn't as much pressure and responsibility to like read and analyze and sit in a computer. And like, I'm that's where a lot of our well. challenges come through. So there's so much noise. There's also so much noise around us now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so what, what are you? I'm just, I find yeah. What have you, super, what have you got from the book an, so far? Yeah. I don't have an official stance on it yet. And maybe it will come by the end of the, the book, but I think for me, it's definitely more environmentally influenced than I, than I initially assumed. That's my perspective. And his argument is not that it's entirely environmental, but that, like many arguments through science is that there's a big predisposition in biology and genetics to have um to, to to for that to come out and for that to manifest itself and the environment produces that but one of the things he talks about so much is some sort of trauma even through birth that that then while you're in the womb still that then causes you to have to, to have those symptoms and, and be, have developmental delays in the areas that he speaks about that, you know, like the prefrontal, prefrontal cortex. I can't remember the actual scientific specific part, but he says that it's, he does have the ideology that it's a mix of the two and that it's a predisposition that the environment causes. But I think he does push it too far on one side because the assumption throughout society is that it is just genetic. So he's trying to fight against that. I think so it often comes out. The yeah. So I, I wouldn't say environmental causes versus like maybe um, it brings out, amp it, amplifies or accentuates, yeah. but um, yeah, I have to do another dive into his work. It'll be interesting to see, but I'm curious, um, you know, how, uh, what, what are the things that how he views it? Say again. One of the things he touches on is he, he he talks about the the obviously everybody has the view that it's genetic and one of the things that they use is this this uh, adopted or uh, biological twins identical twin studies right where they split them up they send them off and then they both end up with ADHD and one of the really interesting points that caught me off guard was that doesn't really apply because of course being split from your parents having and and what sort what sort of environment those sorts of people go through when they get adopted that environment in itself is very traumatic for a child and the sort of conditions that somebody puts puts their child up for adoption are often sh very stressed and very traumatic so i think that sort of discounts and counteracts that side of things Interesting. Yeah. I need to do another deep dive in this and maybe we have a whole pod on, on this topic with other sources as well, because, yeah. you know, it, 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 it is saying that, you know, his, his position is it's a reversible impairment, right? So um, I, I think there is some, there is some merit to that, right? Because when we say reversible, I, I think we can improve a lot of these things. I don't mm -hmm. think from what I'm seeing and my own experience and all the documentation that there's much to, oh. there's much to um, prove that it's fully like reversible. It seems yeah, like, I agree. It's a, the record. yeah, it I seems like it's a biological deficit that can be improved, but not necessarily mm -hmm. fully to the point where it is on par with with others i'm not sure it would be interesting to see more research on that the, the thing the point i think that he that he makes really strongly is that it's not he's trying to shift the view away from the idea that it's a deficit but more in the fact that it's a developmental delay so eventually yeah. with enough work and with enough management right, and understanding right, the right. of it and addressing the root cause rather than just for example taking medication or trying to quick hacks that you find on TikTok. Right. You could build up. Yeah. We could build up those muscles, those skills. Yeah. And that's yeah. a lot of the work I do is yeah. acknowledging these are muscles or skills that we haven't necessarily developed or that are harder. It, it by no means are things that we cannot or will not be able to do. It's we need to like address the like physical therapy. You need to like address the, the deficit, the weakness and, and build it up. So on that, front i do agree i think some of what he says talks 
I think he minimizes sometimes the the role of the biology. Um, but yeah. I'd have to look into it more to to fully understand it. So yeah, take a read. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah, was there anything else you final wanted to question. talk about today? Yeah, I have one final question for you, which I thought would be an interesting one. What is the best resource or book or podcast or anything like that you've ever absorbed about ADHD? What's been the most influential thing for you? <sighs> Great question. So Dr. Hallowell wrote a bunch of books that were incredibly transformative and insightful, totally changed the way I viewed myself and ADHD and my relationship and my history with, with it. And um, there's so Driven to Distraction, ADHD 2.0 are, are incredibly uh, valuable. Also, um, uh, what's his name? Bruce... Dr. Bruce. Terrible with names on good faces. Um, Bruce Perry. Now, let me see. Um, Oh, sorry. Dr. Russell Barkley. Oh, Barkley. Yeah, of course. The Godfather. I yeah. So Dr. Works. Russell Barkley puts out a lot of content on YouTube, actually. And he's got a lot of videos where he explains different things in detail with science and research and studies. So I found him really helpful. And then so those two on the more, you know, clinical, um, what do you call it? Like, um, academic and clinical oh, yeah. side. And then you know, I really love how to ADHD her YouTube channel is phenomenal and has so much valuable. So yeah. Such valuable, quick, easy to digest stuff. And the cartoons make it really relatable. So I feel like those are those three alone have, you know, had a huge influence in my understanding of ADHD. Mm. Nice. My my most influential one for me, I think, and this might not be the the best out there, but it had the most influential impact on me because when I read this book or listened to this audio book, I'd never watched or I never really learned about anything about it before. And this is when I was really starting my journey about learning about ADHD. I listened to a, a audio book called Faster Than Normal by Peter Shankly. It just blew my mind. Yeah. And the audio was yeah. really ADHD friendly as well. Every time. He oh, and he's got a. Uh, we're lucky. He's got a kid's version too, which is great. I read it to my son That's recently. Awesome. It's uh, nice. something like, yeah, fast, you know, the boy with the fast That's brain cool. or something like that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, no, that's a great one. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like uh, yeah. once you start digging, there's a lot, there's a lot there to uncover. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, this has been great. I think, you know, uh, anything to uh, tease for next time? Anything already hot, hot topics that you're looking to cover? I think um, hopefully next week we should have a guest. So mm -hmm. it would be interesting, oh. really interesting to see. Uh, it's in the works. We'll see. But it would be super interesting to see if we could dig deep into someone else's story and just unpick their journey and start doing that for people and see real case studies of how someone goes from not being in control to being a world leader and a CEO and all these things and managing hundreds of people when you can't naturally manage your yeah. Own brain. So. Yeah. So getting some business leaders on is definitely on the horizon. Uh, definitely want to get some folks. We got to get, we got to get Dr. Hallowell at some point and yeah. definitely some of the, some of the, the leaders in the space will be great. And uh, anyone who's listening, if you want to be on the podcast and share your story, I think, it's always interesting for people to hear what others are experiencing. So just ping me or Josh and let us know yeah. if you want to be on in a future episode. And you don't have we'll, to be a business leader or some sort of legend. You, you know, everyone's story is important in their own right. 
Yeah, let us know. Um, all right, and with that, I wish you all well. This has been another fun and exciting episode, and uh, we'll be seeing you next week. Thanks, everyone. Absolutely. Cheers.